Lesson 12.9, Word Problem Solving with Elapsed Time. It's really important you saw 12.8, which is linked in the description, along with an entire playlist about time. We can use the strategy, draw a diagram by making a timeline to solve elapsed time problems. A timeline helps us count the number of hours and minutes of the elapsed time forward or backward from the given start or end time to find the unknown time. There are three parts to elapsed time. A start time, an elapsed time, that's the time that's gone by, and the end time. And we need at least two of these to solve elapsed time problems. And remember, one day is 24 hours, and there's 12 hours in the a.m., morning and 12 hours in the p.m. That's after 12 noon, after lunch, and it's before 12 midnight. And this is when the daylight would be, just before lunch and after lunch. And there'll be a link to third grade math video 10.2 where we explain that more if you need it. Emma started her homework at 3.30 p.m. and finished at 4.18 p.m. How much time elapsed while she did her homework? We think we need to find how much time went by as she did her homework from 3.30 p.m. to 4.18 p.m. So she started at 3.30 p.m. and her end time was 4.18 p.m. We can make a timeline, which is just a number line. We start at 3.30 p.m. and we can make marks of five minute increments from 3.30 p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. would be 30 minutes. That's half an hour. And now that we're at 4 o'clock, and she finished at 4.18, we just need another 18 minutes. That would put us at 4.18 p.m. We do 30 minutes plus the 18. That would be 48 minutes elapsed. We know 30 minutes is a half an hour. We just needed 18 more minutes. Tala and her father went to a magic show that was one hour and 10 minutes long. If the show ended at 5.25 p.m., what time did it start? We think we're given the end time and the elapsed time. We need to work backward to find the start time. So on our timeline, our number line, we start at 5.25 p.m., which is when it ended, and we can go back one hour, because it was one hour and 10 minutes, that would put us at 4.25 p.m. We just need to go back another 10 minutes from 4.25 p.m. to 4.15 p.m. That would be one hour, 10 minutes in all. That tells us that the magic show started at 4.15 p.m. Mrs. Kim started baking a cake at 2.40 p.m. The cake needs to bake for 35 minutes. What time will Mrs. Kim take the cake out of the oven? We think we need to use the time she started baking at 2.40 p.m. and the elapsed time, 35 minutes, to find the end time. We have our timeline and I have it drawn so there's five minutes in between each tick mark. So she started at 2.40 p.m. We can skip count by fives seven times because five times seven is equal to 35. We have 240, 245, 250, 255, and then it would switch to three o'clock, wouldn't it? Then we would have 305, 310, and then 315 p.m. And skip counting by fives one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times would get us to 3.15 p.m. We went 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 minutes. We know the cake comes out of the oven at 3.15 p.m., which would be 35 minutes later from 2.40 p.m. Since Mrs. Kim started baking the cake at 2.40 p.m. and baked it, for 35 minutes, we know the cake came out of the oven at 3.15 p.m. 
if the cake was taken out of the oven at 3.15 a.m., it would have baked for 12 hours and 35 minutes instead of just 35 minutes. For the clock to go from p.m. to a.m., 12 hours would have had to gone by. So we know if it went in at 2.40 p.m., for 35 minutes, it came out at 3.15 p.m. Sanjay spent 16 minutes vacuuming and straightening his room. If he began at 1.12 p.m., what time did he finish? So we think the elapsed time is 16 minutes and we know his start time. Sometimes we can use addition to solve elapsed time problems. From 1.12 p.m. plus 16 minutes will still be the same hour because we're only adding a few minutes. We can add 1.12 p.m. plus 16 minutes. It would be 1.28 p.m. when he finished. And if Sanjay spent one hour and 16 minutes instead of just 16 minutes, we could add 1.12 p.m. plus one hour, 16 minutes elapsed time, and we would know he finished at 2.28 p.m. So sometimes we can use addition to solve these problems. Dave began eating his lunch at 11.45 a.m. and finished 25 minutes later. What time did Dave finish his lunch? So we're given a start time and elapsed time. We think we know the start time and elapsed time. After 15 minutes, this 11.45 a.m. will be noon. It will be 12 noon and the time will change from a.m. to p.m. It's 11.45 a.m. We can skip count by fives to 11.50, 11.55, and then 12 noon. That would be 15 minutes. He ate for 25. We go five more minutes would be 20 minutes, and another five minutes would be 25 minutes. We could see he finishes eating in the p.m. It would be 12.10 p.m. The minute hand went past the 12 on an analog clock, the hour hand started pointing to the 12, and our end time is 12.10 p.m. What if Dave finished eating his lunch at 12.20 p.m. and ate for 25 minutes? At what time did his lunch start? So in this problem, we had the start time and the elapsed time. We needed to find the end time. Now we're given an end time and elapsed time, and we need to find the start time. So we're gonna start on this side of our timeline. If we subtract 20 minutes from 1220, well then that'll be 12 noon. We need 25 so we can subtract five more, and that would put us at 1155 AM. The time will change from PM to AM because now we're before 12 noon. That means Dave started his lunch at 11.55 a.m. Now let's try some higher order thinking skills. Sophia finished her math homework at 3.50 p.m. That's the afternoon, isn't it? She had 20 fraction problems in all. If each problem took her two minutes to do, at what time did Sophia start doing her homework? So we think we have the end time, 3.50 p.m. We need to figure out the elapsed time to find the start time. She had 20 fraction problems that took two minutes each to do. We multiply 20 problems times two minutes each. That's 40 minutes elapsed time. We can subtract 40 minutes from 3.50 p.m. We have 3.50 p.m. If we take away 40 minutes, the hour will still be the same. That means she started her homework at 3.10 p.m. So sometimes we can use subtraction to help us solve elapsed time problems. On Saturday, Bob spent four hours and 15 minutes working in his garden. If he began at 8.45 a.m., what time did he finish? Well, we have 
his start time, that's when he began, and we have the elapsed time of 4 hours and 15 minutes. We can make a list of the time that has elapsed. He started at 8.45 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. That would be one hour that has passed. To 10.45 a.m., that would be two hours. 11.45 a.m. would be three hours. Then to 12.45 p.m., because it switches after 12 noon, right? That would be four hours, and he did four hours and 15 minutes. So we need 15 minutes more than 12.45 p.m., that would be 1 o'clock p.m. when he ended. So Bob finished working in his garden at 1 o'clock p.m. And this list is just a vertical timeline. We could have put a line with our little tick marks coming down. Emma finished babysitting at 8.10 p.m. She babysat for 2 hours and 40 minutes. What time did Emma begin babysitting? So we think we can work backward because we have the end time and elapsed time. So on our timeline, we start at 8.10 p.m. when she finished babysitting, and we go back 2 hours and 40 minutes. Going back 1 hour would be 7.10 p.m. Going back 2 hours in all would be 6.10 p.m. Now we need 40 more minutes, and we can split that 40 into a 10 minute and 30 minute increments to go back to 6 o'clock p.m. for the 10 minutes. Then 30 more minutes would be a half hour. That would be at 5.30 p.m. We count back from the end time 8.10 p.m. moving left towards the earlier times by the elapsed time of 2 hours, then 10 minutes, then 30 minutes to total 2 hours and 40 minutes. We also could count back starting at 8.10 p.m., we could go back 40 minutes to 7.30 p.m. That would be about right here. And then go back 2 hours, 1, 2, to 5.30 p.m. And there's usually more than one way to solve a problem, isn't there? We might find one way is easier than another. So remember when solving elapsed time problems to be very careful about that a.m. and p.m. You want to make sure you're using the correct one. In our next lesson, 12.10, we're going to talk about mixed measures and how converting measures to lesser units to add or subtract or regrouping them to add or subtract. And I hope I'll see you there. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.